So in this example, we have a very simple structure of an application. We have basically two components. We have our root component, which is our top level component, which has here basically a button, which when clicking on the button invokes that increment function and that increment function does nothing else than incrementing that counter property of this data object here. Furthermore, we have here our counter component. Our counter component is a very simple one. It does nothing else than visualizing the data of here the data object and the counter variable or member of this data object and that object gets passed in here via that input property. Now what happens outside here as you can see we use the, the normal angular input property bindings and we pass in our object from the outside. As a result when we click the button we see it gets refreshed. So what, what happens here behind the scenes is that the angular change detection kicks in. It detects a change on that object and note that it verifies the entire object so all the sub nested objects that could possibly be inside the data object here and if there is a change it basically propagates it downwards to the child's which use that property as well and that will go on also for children's obviously of that counter component as well so in this simple example we just have two components to keep it really simple so what we can do now is to use immutable objects to basically speed up this whole change detection thing. So what we tell Angular is basically only update our subcomponent here to only trigger change detection when the object reference changes and not only basically a property within that object. So obviously that goes a lot faster than verifying potentially all member variables of the data object here. So the first step is to go into our counter component and import the change detection strategy. And then we can use a property here on our object, which is called change detection and activate the change detection strategy to on push rather than the default one. And this basically now tells Angular to only perform change detection when the reference of this input data changed and not if a property within that data changed. So let's give that a look. Again, here the code remained unchanged. Here we refresh, and now it doesn't work anymore. Why is that the case? Because we don't actually change the reference here, but rather we just change a property within our data object here. So what we need to do here is to basically simulate here an immutable object. And this is done by associating here a new reference. So we create a new object. Obviously, we also have that counter object again. And then we basically increment our previous counter variable which we had before. Now if we save this, as you can see now we have a new object reference here so it won't be equal to the previous one and now the change detection works again. So something that can be immediately seen is that Angular now doesn't have to perform any kind of deep checking of properties inside our data object and obviously in our real case scenario this could be a much larger object which arrays and sub objects as well. So this is obviously just one advantage, but actually a minor one. The really big advantage here is that Angular can now say whenever that object here, the reference of that object is different from the one which we had before, so which has been passed inside our app counter component here, it can avoid doing change detection for that entire subtree, which might sit here behind that app counter. And that increases the speed tremendously.